Welcome back to Excel Exposure. Today's lesson will be an in-depth look at the VLOOKUP function. I've explained this in minor detail in the lookup and reference functions video, but here I will go into much more detail as to what the VLOOKUP function does and how you can write intelligent formulas that will end up saving you quite a bit of time. From my experience interviewing potential candidates for finance positions, VLOOKUPs and pivot tables are the most frequently mentioned functionalities in Excel since they're so powerful, but many people just use them as a buzzword and don't really know how to use them properly and the range of uses each has. So hopefully after this video you will have a much better idea as to how to use the VLOOKUP function and how you can intelligently design spreadsheets that are set up in a way that is very conducive to using VLOOKUP to find values. First we'll look at the syntax. You can see I've separated it out a little bit to make it easier to read, but essentially the VLOOKUP function, you put a lookup value, which is the value to look for in the first column of the table or range that you're looking at, and it can be a value typed into the formula, or it can be a reference to another cell, which then it would be looking up that value table array is the range or reference of a multiple column table where you will find that lookup value and then return related information from the table. The column index number is the number in that table which you want returned when it finds a matching value. So the first column which is where you're looking up the value would be number one and any other columns to the right would be two three four five etc and so you need to make sure that your table is large enough for the column number that you're grabbing and lastly we have range lookup which is a true or false that dictates whether VLOOKUP should find the exact match which would be false and therefore it will go through the entire list to find the match and your data does not need to be sorted if there are more than one match when looking it up, the first one found will be used. If you leave it true, the table that you're referring to should be sorted alphabetically because it will find the closest match in alphabetical order to what you're searching for. And I'll show you an example of that in just a second. So before we jump into writing the formula, I want to show you the underlying data that I have, which we'll be looking up. You'll see there's three tabs here, book, online, and other. On each one, there is a pretty basic income statement with made up sales information, costs to get to uh, profit. And so I have the same format for each tab. So each category is in the same row and all of the calculated values are in the same columns to the right. And you'll see that I have 2011, 2012, 2013, and total. In order to help with the VLOOKUP formulas we're doing, I created a reference table so if you click on the reference tab, you'll see I have year listed, including total, and the VLOOKUP column, which is the column index number that I'll be using in the VLOOKUP formula. When I highlight this, you can see that I've named it year table, which is using a named range. And so 2345 means if I go to any of these income statements, the first column would be A. As I move to the right, you can see that it tells me the number of columns right next to the current column header and that way you can see how many columns away each year is. So on my VLOOKUP examples tab I've got some examples of different VLOOKUP formulas and they basically range in sophistication from the most basic at the top to the most advanced at the bottom. First, I'll discuss the year column. So in here, you can see we have a VLOOKUP formula. It is taking D22 as the lookup value, which is 2011. For the table array, it's using year table, which I just showed you. Column index number is 2 because that table only had two columns, just the year and then the column number that it's going to pull. And this time I use true. I almost exclusively use false in every other instance, but I wanted to show you how to use true. Also, if you don't put in true, you can omit this value and it will default to true. And it pulls in the correct column index number of whichever year I happen to be looking up. The reason why true works in this instance is because my table is sorted alphabetically, which would be numbers first, then letters, 
and since 2011, 2012, 2013 in total are in alphabetical order, it comes up with the correct value, and therefore I can use true since my data is sorted. I'll quickly show you how that true value can mess up your data if it's not sorted properly. So I'll insert 2014 with the random value. Now when I go to my VLOOKUP examples, if I wanted to look up 2013, you'll see that it comes up with 3, which is the value for 2012, because it sees that 2014 is past where it should be, so it goes to the value before that. And so that's why I usually use false, because really the only problems you'll run into is if you have a, a very large amount of data, because it'll require the VLOOKUP to go through the entire column to match it rather than just finding the first match alphabetically. And so I just undid that to get us back to where we were before. Now I'll go through the VLOOKUP examples that I have set up. So the first VLOOKUP formula that we have is the most basic type, which is where you type in all of the components of the function directly into the cell and it never changes based on another cell's value. So in this example we're going to look up sales revenue line item in the sheet book from A4 to E20 which if we go to book A4 to E20 that is the range of the income statement. For column index number we're going to do 2 which we can see to the left since year column is telling us 2 that's what we're going to use and false because none of the line items or categories in the income statement is sorted. And when I hit enter, it brings me 29,970. If we go to the book sheet, you'll see that sales revenue for 2011 is 29,970, which is exactly what we wanted to pull. And so that was looking up sales revenue. What if we change this? You'll see these have drop down lists for data validation and you can pick any one of the items that show up on the income statement so let's do cost of goods sold as it is below you'll see here nothing changes because we have hard coded the sales revenue as text one way to get around this if you look at the formula below it you'll see instead of typing in directly the line item I can refer to the cell that I wanted to look up and you'll see that that's the only difference between these two formulas is to show you when the lookup value changes the result will change because it's hooked up to the cell so if I change this to sales revenue we'd see that it matches above continuing on the next thing that could change is the column index number so we've already got this VLOOKUP here to grab the year column correctly but as you'll see up here if we change the year nothing happens to our formula because the 2 for column index number is put in as a value only. In this formula, instead we refer to the cell to the left of it, which is E24, and that way if you change your year, you'll see that the year column updates via the VLOOKUP, and then the VLOOKUP that you're using updates to give you the correct value. So if we did 2013, and you'll see this change to marketing and advertising, if we go to look at book, marketing and advertising, 2013 14993 so so far we've been able to change the lookup value so it refers to another cell the column index number so it refers to another cell and the last thing we'd want to do is be able to change the range itself so here you'll see that it's going to try to pull from the online income statement the way to do that in the formula is a little bit more complicated and you can refer to my previous lesson on lookup and referencing functions but essentially if you take the indirect function which will essentially take whatever information you give it and try to create a range reference out of it so here I'm taking B25 which is online and this ampersand means I'm concatenating text so I'm smushing text together so I'm taking B25 and in addition to that I'm also going to put an exclamation point followed by the range of the income statement and you'll see that this is in quotes so whatever you write in quotes it'll take directly as is and B25 would be a reference and this would be a great place to use your formula evaluator so if you highlight F25 where this indirect function VLOOKUP is 
and you go to formulas on the ribbon you'll see here there's an evaluate formula button if you click this our formula pops up here and as I click evaluate it will first take C25 which is my net profit line item and it will pull that result in then it will take B25 from the indirect function which is online in quotes and put that into the indirect function next it will evaluate the indirect function itself and you can tell what's being evaluated by what is underlined so the indirect function will result in that concatenated area we saw underlined and if you click evaluate again you'll see that the indirect function resulted in the full range reference to our range and if you click evaluate again it'll show you the result so you hit close and that just shows you the process of it taking each component and how Excel works through it to come up with the right answer and so now we've actually hooked up all of our relevant variables so that you can change any one of these values and get the corresponding answer from your income statement one important thing to note with the indirect function if you have a sheet name that is more than one word with a space in it you'll need to add an apostrophe before and after the sheet name and I'll show you a quick example of that if I hit equals book and pick a cell hit enter you'll see the book formula has just an exclamation point following it and the reference if below that I did equals and I went to item example and clicked any cell and hit enter you'll see that item example has an apostrophe or a single quote on either side of it so if you're going to have sheets with spaces in between or even if you're not I like to put it in just to be safe I would modify that indirect function so that at the beginning in between two double quotes I have an apostrophe then an ampersand then the sheet name then before this exclamation point I'm gonna put another apostrophe and hit enter and you'll see that it'll still work on single word spreadsheets even with the apostrophes but those apostrophes are needed whenever there's a space in your sheet name so lastly on this item example tab I just wanted to show you how you could create an item query basically that works off of an order ID number and you have subsequent VLOOKUP formulas to pull in all the related information this could be helpful if you had all of your data on one sheet but you wanted to have one area where you could either pull in one items information or you could have a list of certain items let's say items placed during the week you put them into the first column and with VLOOKUPs to the right all of the relevant information can populate that way so you'll see up top I've put in a column index number above each of these and I will delete these formulas just to show you how this is done so I'm doing a VLOOKUP of A4 and I put the dollar sign in front of the A so when I copy it to the right it will hold the column constant and I will look it up in order table which is this area below then B2 for my column index number which I have the dollar sign in front of the row number this time so that the row stays constant but the column changes as I copy over so if I take that formula use my autofill handle and drag it to the right and I will click fill without formatting you'll see that it kept the order ID in the first part of the VLOOKUP but changed the column each time to reference the column number up top which can be very useful whenever you're copying VLOOKUP formulas across to extract a lot of information about one specific lookup value so I hope that was useful uh, there are plenty more ways to use VLOOKUPs intelligently but I suggest you play around with the examples I have here get more familiar with it and feel free to post any questions or comments down below